Okay, let's talk about the CVEST um, exam and specifically the mathematics part of it. So if you're in California and you're an aspiring teacher or uh, an educator right now, um, you well know that CVEST and there's other tests out there, the CSET, all depends what you're going to be teaching and at what level, but for the most part, many uh, out there are going to have to take the CVEST and do very well on. Um, so math is going to be part of that test. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to review a very important algebra concept of slope. It's a fundamental um, concept but um, a lot of students struggle with it and then it, it messes them up in a lot of different areas in algebra. So to do very well on the CBEST you absolutely need to um, have very strong algebra skills. Uh, you don't have to have I would say super um, advanced algebra skills it's nice to know I mean you want to go as high as you can but definitely um, let's say at the algebra one level the freshman level mathematics you definitely want to you know have a real sh command of uh, that level of algebra now of course if you're taking the C set that's a whole different uh, you know thing you're gonna have to know you know much more math just beyond uh, basic algebra now again let me just say this much algebra is only part of what you need to know for the CBEST in terms of the math component. You got, you're going to want to study some geometry and, and you know basic data uh, concepts like basic probability, you know, mean, median mode, all that kind of stuff. So if you're kind of you know struggling studying for the CBEST, the math component of it, I actually offer a uh, CBEST math uh, test prep course if you like my teaching style. Um, uh, I'll leave the link in the description uh, of this video for that course. I myself am a math teacher taught from sixth grade through college so I know all about taking exams and teaching etc. So uh, but anyways also let me just suggest that there's literally I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that uh, will definitely help you out for the CPAS but but you do need to have an organized manner just don't leave things to chance it's just too important of exam uh, to do so. So with that being said let's get in to what I want to talk about and this is slope. Now what I'm talking about here is the slope of a line. So let's say I have a couple equations here. Let me just write these down. Let's get some terminology down here. So in algebra we study how to graph a line. Okay, But technically a line all right, so we're saying graph a line. But the technical uh, nomenclature, if you will, for a line is a linear equation. So that's what these guys here are, okay? So this is a linear equation, which is the equation of a line, okay? And so is this. Now, the reason why they're linear equations is that we have two variables, an x and a y. Now, I'm kind of somewhat simplifying out there. I don't want to get over technical but this is going to be uh, definitely enough information for you to understand. So if there's somebody out there saying well you forgot to say this, this and this. Listen, I'm kind of teaching at a, a particular level. I'm not patronizing you but I'm not going to try to you know um, you know get give you all the details that are kind of extraneous. I'm telling you what you kind of need to know to do very well on the CBEST. So these are linear equations and a way you can recognize them is they have an x and a y. Okay, so we have, well first of all, they, we have an equation. So there's an equal sign here, right? And we have an x and a y. And both those x and y are at one power. So in other words, we don't have x squared, we don't have x cubed. None of that, we just have an x, a y, and an equal sign and some numbers, okay? So you have that situation, we're dealing with a linear equation or the equation of a line. In other words, this is, this right here is a algebra equation, an algebraic equation, but it also has, or these also have respective graphs, okay? Now the, now that we, you know, we know that they're linear, okay, they're linear equations, so the graphs are gonna be some sort of line. Okay, so this is going to have some sort of graph, and it's going to be some sort of it's going to be some sort of straight line. Okay, now the lines can have various different shapes and, and angles to them. So the steepness of these lines is what we call the slope. Okay, so how we describe how steep a line is. If I'm saying I have a line like this, and I'm comparing this line here 
these two lines, well, how can I compare them? I'm, I'm going to say, well, this one kind of goes from left to right. It increases. This one drops. This one, they seem to have the kind of same steepness. Well, we actually have a, uh, a concept in algebra that helps us define precisely the angle or the steepness of these lines, and that's called the slope. Okay, so that's what this is. So that's what this uh, uh, video is kind of honing in and on is the slope of these lines. Now, I can I don't want to make this video too terribly long, so I maybe I might kind of touch on some things, but everything that I'm going to touch on, you definitely need to know at a higher level. But first of all, the first thing is I want you to just understand uh, what we're talking about in terms of hey, we're talking about linear equations, we're talking about the concept of slope. Now we can kind of you know, go further. So the slope is the way we define the sle uh, the steepness of lines, okay, that are the graphical representation of linear equations. All right, so what is the slope? Well, the slope is defined, well, let me do this over here. The slope is defined by this uh, concept of rise over the run, the rise over the run. Now what does that mean? Let me kind of just do something like here and let me just do a little line and I'm just making a <laughs> probably not the best sketch but hopefully you'll get the idea here. Actually let me do, do this a little bit a little better. Okay so this is our x-axis, here's our line but let's just say I have a uh, some sort of house right here. Okay, I'm drawing a little sketch and let's say this line, so I have a little house or a little um, shed or whatever you want to think of this and let's say this line right here is like a ladder. Okay, so like we have a ladder and now I want to kind of describe to somebody, I want to say you know, hey look this ladder is, you know, it's not that, st it's not that steep against the house, it's safe all right, versus something that's going, you know, really, really steep or something that's going really, really out this way, right? So how can I describe this uh, to somebody precisely so they know exactly what I'm talking about? Well, we can use this concept of rise over the run. So the rise is how much the line goes up. So if you could see, let's say this ladder goes up one, two, three, four. Okay, it's up four but it went out one, two, three, four, five, okay? So for every five, the ladder went out, five, let's say five feet or whatever, five yards, it went up four. So it went out one, two, three, four, five, and then it went up one, two, three, four. So this ratio, okay, these two numbers is exactly what the definition of the slope is. So the rise is how much it goes up Okay, so in this case it went up four and the run is how much it went out. Okay, and that is five. So the run is always going to be how much a line goes out to the right. It's always to the right and a rise is going to be how much the line rises either up or down. Up or down because I can have a scenario, let's say like this. Okay, so I'm counting this um, um, this is the run of the line, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm running to the right, and then I went up three. One, two, three. This is my rise. Okay, so that's positive. So when a line is increasing this way, when it's when it's going up from left to right, my slope is positive. You need to know that. Okay, slope is positive. And by the way, let's just do something right now in mathematics. In algebra, we like to have the slope defined um, with this variable m. It's a small m. Okay, so here we have a positive slope, or m is positive. Now, I said that we could have negative slopes. So let's uh, let's do something like this. You know, matter of fact, let me just erase this. And I would not try to take too many notes with this. This is just more informational. Uh, but if you're learning, that's great. And again, you know, if you like my teaching style, you really want to check out, you know, all my full comprehensive material on this. It's really, really, it's it's probably more than I even taught in the classroom. I mean, that's it's a lot of material, but it's going to teach you everything that you really 
need to know about algebra and beyond. All right, so now let's take a look at the situation where we have a negative slope. So now let's kind of start from here. Let's kind of count this way. So this line is dropping one, two, three for every one, two, three, four, it runs out. Now we can count this ratio, this slope, anywhere along the line and the axis, okay? So you can you can count the rise and the run as long as you're making a right angle when you do your turns here is what it counts. So here I told you the the rise can either go up or down. Here it's going down. All right. So we're going to give that a negative value, but it's always going to run to the right. So here our m or our slope would be negative three over one, two, three, four, so that we have a negative uh, three fourths slope here. Okay. So just you know the first thing about slope is you got to you know understand um, what it is okay, and how it operates because you could be given some sort of um, it's a very classic problem in uh, algebra you might see it on the CBEST or something like like it they'll just give you a line on an XY plane and I'll say hey what's the slope of this line so they're basically what they're testing is hey do you understand the concept of slope and can you measure it and all you have to do is just find yourself a nice right triangle okay you don't want to count like in between you know the grid find yourself a nice well uh, grid it's got to be a right okay you can't go like this or nothing like that just find yourself a nice right triangle and then count the run and the rise and then you just could uh, have your two fractions the rise over the run and then the most important thing is make sure you reduce that fraction right and then you have yourself the slope so let's um let's kind of back this up a little bit further here um, again, I'm not going to go completely, completely into too much because this is a, it's a pretty big topic. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, huge, but there, it, there is a lot of things that we could talk about the slope. And I, again, I don't want to uh, uh, make this video too long, but I do want to kind of emphasize a few things that you're going to need to know how to do beyond what I have already talked about. So what I've, we've already talked about is just a definition of slope, and let's just review a few things. So lines that go this way have a positive slope. Okay, lines that go this way have a negative slope. Now, we didn't talk about two other uh, scenarios, right? What about lines that are flat? Okay, horizontal lines. Well, they happen to have a slope that is zero. Okay, they happen to have a slope of zero. Now, why is that? Because these lines, guess what? Their rise is zero. They're not rising at all. They're just running infinitely. Okay, so the rise happens to be zero. The run it just keeps going on forever and ever, right? So this is this right here, zero divided by whatever is going to be zero. Now, one of the things that you really want to be aware of is this final one, okay? Well, you need to be aware of all of this, but what about a line that is vertical? Well, lines that are vertical have undefined slope. Undefined, we can't define it. Now, why is that? Let's take a look at the rise of the run. The run is now zero. This line is not running. There's no movement to the right, but the rise is uh, infinite. So anytime you divide by zero, anything by zero in mathematics, uh, we uh, define that as undefined. Okay. So if you understand everything that I'm talking about so far, I mean, that's very good. Okay. Very, very good. Now let's just talk about a few other um, quick skills that you're going to need to know. And, and this is all fundamental things. If this all sounds familiar to you, you're like, oh yes, I kind of remember this from algebra and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's good. But there's more that you need to know about slope. Now, a big, uh, uh, another type of thing you need to know about slope is if I give you a line, you may be asked to, um, and I give you two points that are on this line. Let's say this is three, four, and let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say this is negative six, negative two. You need to uh, be able to, to calculate the slope by using two ordered pairs, by two points that are on that line. This is something you're going to uh, need to know how to do. This is a separate video because I just don't want to get, you know, again, uh, go too much further into this. But basically, you're going to use the definition of rise over of the run. And the rise is in algebra is the differences of the y's. So we're going to subtract the y's, okay, 
Now you might have seen this notation again here, y2 minus y1. That's just basically you could say this is one y and this is another y. That's why we have these this little subscript y2 versus uh, uh, subtracted from y1 or y1 subtracted from y2 and then we're gonna uh, do the same thing with the run. The run is the x's right along the x-axis so it's gonna be x2 minus x1. So that's the algebraic uh, definition of slope and you need to be able to calculate this. Students make mistakes on doing this all the time so that's another skill you're going to need to know how to do. You're also going to need to know how to identify the slope in uh, linear equations. It happens to be right here in this particular problem, the 2, because this line is in y equals mx plus b form. Remember m is the slope. So whatever that number is, is 2. You're saying, well, are, you know, isn't the slope a fraction? Yes. 2 is the same thing as a fraction 2 over 1. So for every 1, this line goes over to the right it rises to, okay? So, and here is another linear equation in standard form. You're going to need to know how to convert that, and find a slope, etc. So let's just go ahead and call this a wrap right now. Hopefully, you know, um, you uh, are like, oh yes, I remember all this. All of you out there, if you're taking a CBEST, I mean, you're, you know, you've taken this material before, but just like any student, you know, and we're, you know, teachers are not superhuman, <laughs> as you, as you well know. I know myself. Even though I have a degree in mathematics, master's degree, if I'm going to go in and teach high school level quadratic equations, whatever, I need to review. I need to make sure, um, you know, I'm 100 percent. You know, my mind is focused on the material. So just because you've taken a course, that really doesn't. Yeah, that's good. But you have to get reconnected with this, and the only way to do it is through practice and seeing demonstrator problems and a lot of them. So that's the most effective way to, to review math and learn, and learn math. So again, if you like my teaching style, I have my uh, CBEST uh, math prep course uh, link in the description of this video. I, again, I have, literally have hundreds of videos on my channel um, at the high school level mathematics. Um, I do a lot, not just for the CBEST, I do a lot for different exams and etc. My passion is teaching, so I like to put out um, uh, as much material as I can. And if you enjoy this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Let me know how things are going um, with your career in terms of, you know, what what you're learning in terms of preparing for uh, the CBEST or just what's kind of going on in California. And you know what? I'm a student as well. So the feedback I get from, uh, from you or others helps me, um, you know, get more focused and just more knowledge so I can pass it on. So with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. I wish you all the best on the CBEST. Thanks for watching and have a great day.